afternoon. This is Dr. Knox in Lecture 2 on the impact of the fall and what the foundation for the Monarch Mind Control Program system is, as well as all acts of the occult and rituals. This lecture is on how the fall transformed us into sinners. Romans chapter 5 verses 8 and 19 say, But God commendeth his love towards us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. When the Bible tells us that we were made sinners, what is literally meant is that we were changed from being in a state of innocence, the state that God created mankind to be in. That's the state that Adam and Eve enjoyed prior to the fatal sin of eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The state of innocence is just what it sounds like. Adam and Eve only knew the good things of God. They were incapable of having any wrong or sinful thoughts. And as a result, they fell to the wiles, or shall we say the schemes, of the devil, the serpent. Because they did not have the ability to conceive that somebody would trick them. They didn't know what that was, nor understand it. Everything they did, their entire life, was an open expression of worship and acknowledging the true and the living God. The Lord would come to the garden and together Adam and Eve would walk with him. They enjoyed sweet fellowship and, and were joined together in mind, heart, body, soul, and spirit. Everything was good. There was no sickness, disease, evil. There was no selfishness or sin or idolatry of any kind. But the change happened. The destruction came upon mankind after Satan and the angels rebelled and were cast down. It was at that point that the devil tempted Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden to sin, and they failed that temptation. They fell to it. That's why it's called the fall of man. But once again, before you're too hard on Adam and Eve, understand this. Being in a state of innocence, they would not have been able to know that they were being seduced to sin. They were unable to know what sin or rebellion even was until after the fall, and then their eyes and minds were open to what evil is. The result was instantaneous. They were no longer allowed to be in the Garden of Eden. From that point forward, they could no longer enjoy the sweet fellowship with God in the same manner that they had had prior to the fall. This has affected all of us. The ramifications have been eternal upon mankind. They were forever changed, and so would be their children, which is us. This is why the redemption and restorative power of Christ is so vitally needed. Without Christ, we cannot enjoy sweet fellowship. We cannot be restored nor have communion with Him and the Father. His cleansing and redemption work atones us. It makes us one with God again, and that is only through the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because through the fall, we, all mankind, have become sinners. Now, when the Bible calls us sinners, what it is saying is that while we are in a... It's saying we are in a state of being perpetually devoted to sin. Okay? We're not devoted to God. We're devoted to sin. But while we were in this, God presented his love towards us. Even though we are in a perpetual state of sin against him, he presented his love towards us. He approved of a way in which we could be restored, and it was only through the sacrificial death, the atoning death of Jesus Christ. The word that's used for sinner is hamartalos. Hamartalos. And in the Greek language, it means to be devoted to sin, i.e. a sinner. Sin has become the preeminent form of life for all of mankind. We are driven to be especially wicked. And it's because, like I said in the last one, last lecture, sin and death are woven. They're two spirits, and they're woven in the fabric of our being at conception. And as we grow, they grow with us and expand. I've heard sin described many times as missing the mark, like an arrow that misses the bullseye. But my friend, that is completely wrong definition. In order to make the analogy of an arrow and a bullseye missing the mark, you would have to describe it as an arrow that cannot even be launched. It can't even be placed into the, the bow. 
The arrow has absolutely no power nor ability to even approach the target. It's incapable to connect with the target. It is not missing the target. The arrow doesn't have the power to launch. It has no bow to, to do it, no hand to throw it. So it means to not be connected to. The arrow can never be connected to the target. You see, God knew that we could never be connected to him because of our sin. This is what happened with the fall. So he reached out to us to connect us to himself through the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus bridged that gulf, that gulf and spanned that gap that we could not do. And he did it with three nails and a cross. So I hope this has clarified what it means to be a sinner to you. If you recognize your need for Jesus Christ to restore you and have fellowship with him, or if you know somebody that does, lead them in this prayer or say this prayer. Dearest Heavenly Father of my Lord Jesus Christ, I now realize why you had to send Jesus to live and die on my behalf. I was not able to ever have fellowship with you on my own. I am completely given over to sin and without any strength to reach you. Thank you for sending Jesus on my behalf to die on the cross and to pay for my sins, to bridge the gap between myself and you by spreading his arms upon the cruel cross. I thank you, Father, that through those three nails driven into my blessed Savior's hands and feet, upon the cross of Calvary, you have built a bridge to heaven so that I may enter in. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins and all the sins of my ancestors all the way back to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Lord, I renounce all rituals that have been done in order to keep me in this state of being a sinner. I pray and ask that you break the power of sin in my life and that you would atone for every part of my mind, soul, body, spirit, will, emotions, intellect, and ability to reason. For you are a good and a gracious God that sees all of my need. And right now I cast myself upon you for sweet release and healing. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for dying for me. And thank you, Father, for raising Jesus from the dead so that he can live for me. But not only for me, I pray that you would enter into me and make me your holy child. Please forgive me of all my sins and grant me your holy salvation. I accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. And it's in his holy name I do pray. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer, share the good news with somebody. Help others to come out of the darkness. This has been Dr. Tom Knotts with Lecture 2. And I will continue this series of lectures on what the fall did and how it's the foundation for the monarch mind control system, as well as the foundation for all families that are pure bloods, blue bloods, or in the occult. Lord Jesus bless you. Amen.